friends, Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So guys, when I make the point that we're in need of a new party, I don't do so because it's practical. I do so because it's necessary. There is a big difference between those things. Um, I boil this down into three main points, the last one being the most important. So the first one, look, everybody understands that our parties, for the most part, are bought and paid for. We have the best government that money can buy. These guys are given a lot of money to take particular positions. And in taking those positions, they make an argument to their particular constituencies, meaning the voting public, that would allow that public to make a vote for them, even though they're not representing their voters' interests. This has led us to ruin, literally. That's not hyperbole. This has led us to ruin, and it continues to lead us to ruin. So in one situation, you have environmental collapse, planetary, ecological collapse, literally. Scientists who are usually dispassionate in regards to getting across information are not being dispassionate on this particular subject. They realize that the world is at stake. We have one world at our disposal, and both of these parties are seeing fit to dispose of it as fast as they possibly can based upon an illusion of profit. One party, Republican Party, is consistent. They full well believe that there's a man in the clouds. But the science and the research that says, hey, there's a problem with the things that we're doing in regard to our acquisition of profit that is damaging our environment. That they don't believe. They're skeptical about that. Now, I always make the case that they're skeptical about it because the people who are stuffing money in their pocket. It is absolutely difficult to get somebody to agree with something that is against their fiscal interests. Who cares that the world is at stake? My donors require me to take this path. The other party, the Democratic Party. Now, they take a weird sip spot. They say, we agree with the science. We believe in science. But in no way do they grapple with the actual reality, the real world consequences of what that science is saying. That doesn't make sense. If you agree with the science and the science is saying that this is cataclysmic, and this could destroy life on Earth. How do you look at that? How do you hear that? How do you say I agree with that? And then don't do anything about it. It's cataclysmic. The very act of what's at stake demands a certain level of behavior. There's a contradiction in the way that they're taking that information versus them saying they actually believe that information. The second issue has to do with the Ponzi scheme we call our economics. It's a capitalistic model. Ultimately, this model drives massive amounts of income inequality, massive amounts of depression, poverty, illness, crime for that matter. It's one social ill after another. And for the most part, we support this particular system unequivocally, regardless of the consequences of supporting that particular system. We thought the crash in 2008 was bad. You ain't seen nothing yet. We're $20 trillion in debt. And despite of being $20 trillion in debt, the things that we were doing before that crash are essentially the same things that we're doing now. The tepid regulation that was put in place during the Obama administration has been ripped off. Another one is coming. And that one is going to be hellish. The third issue, and the one that brings, that's the point of this particular segment, a potential nuclear war, essentially annihilation by a nuclear weapon. That's not environment, that's not economics. That is calamity of our own making. Just like the other two are calamities of our own making. But this one is not 20, 30, 40 years down the line. This one is now. It is pertinent, it is pressing. It is now, we're talking about destroying life on this planet. And many respects. And look, understand the situation. A guy that for the most part has functioned as a reality show host, as his only real successful endeavor. A host that got his jollies off of fire and has been celebrities looking for a new chance at fame. 
that guy believes, totally believes, that he has the judgment necessary, using no evidence at all, to illegally make a strike against another sovereign nation. Now, for whatever reason, initially I didn't quite understand why this was so jarring to me. I, I, I full well understood that presidents, going back from Bush, Obama, and Trump, has been murdering civilians at an unprecedented level. But I, I realized the difference. In one situation, those murders, the drone murders, the putting in special forces, all those things are unacknowledged. Everybody knows they happen. It's the largest secret that everybody knows. This wasn't unacknowledged. This was clear. It was in your face. It was overt. The president took it upon himself without any constitutional authority, without any international authority, to invade another country and attack that other country, killing military personnel at the same time during that attack without having any proof, without any investigation to legitimize that attack. Now, even if he did have an investigation, even if that investigation showed Syria did commit that particular, did drop that chemical weapon, it still wouldn't make this attack any more legal. That is important. The president, literally, unilaterally, without Congress, without any kind of international justification, attacks another country. This is bad enough. This is bad enough. But to, to make this that much more gross, the party that's been calling this guy everything but a child of God, racist, bigoted, xenophobic, an idiot, he couldn't put two sentences together, one insult after the other, and yet, the Democrats are supporting him, for the most part, in this particular illegal endeavor. I think there are two, more than two dozen Democrats in the Senate, and that's just the Senate, that has essentially agreed with what Donald Trump is doing. And by what he's doing, let's not use a euphemism, let's be very clear. He has taken upon himself to invade another country and drop 59 missiles. The country that he's invaded and that he's dropping missiles on is supported by a nuclear nation, Russia. Russia has already said that if the United States attacks their interests or tries to remove Assad, they will shoot those planes down. That is literally a nuclear war. That is not a nuclear war because Russia did anything. That is not a nuclear war because Syria did something wrong. Syria did do something wrong. Russia often does things wrong. But in this very specific case, the United States is taking upon itself to attack another nation. Another nation that's bolstered by a nuclear-powered nation. The United States has no justification to do this, be it moral or legal. That didn't stop him from doing it. Nor did that stop more than two dozen Democrats in the Senate. That's not including the Democrats. They're in the House from supporting it, including Hillary Clinton, including that socialist, or the man who calls himself a socialist, Bernie Sanders. On that note, Bernie Sanders should really just stop calling himself a socialist. He should just call himself a Democrat. He's functioning as a Democrat. And I have to be honest, I am immensely frustrated at his behavior. He, Bernie Sanders was cheated by the Democratic Party. People, millions of people, donated millions and millions of dollars to that campaign. It came out that he was cheated by the Democratic Party. After the election, he told this Russia line that the Democrats were putting out, saying that Russia somehow defrauded the people of this country. The ridiculousness of the statement is that everybody knows that it was the Democratic Party that cheated him. And he's supporting the Democratic Party in this line about Russia, even though they can't materialize any hard evidence that Russia had anything to do with it. To back this point up, he then goes and says, doesn't condemn this strike, doesn't condemn it. He makes this case that 
Assad is a war criminal. That may be true. Given his own president a blank pass, whether it was Bush, whether it was Obama, or whether right here, right now, Donald Trump, all of which have killed thousands of people. George Bush kicking it up a notch, engaging in torture. Sanders, for the most part, gives this stuff somewhat of a blank pass. He doesn't condemn Trump's actions. He gives this tepid response at best. Certainly this is problematic when both parties and the person who everyone keeps trying to draft is backing up blatantly illegal behavior. Someone needs to explain to me what justification is Trump using to do these strikes. Somebody also needs to explain to me what justification are the Democrats using to say that these strikes are perfectly okay. The point I'm making is these two parties are agreeing on a host of issues. Many of these issues can end life on this planet. Full stop. We need to be very clear in what I'm saying. Ultimately, they decided on the course of an illegal attack. Both parties, for the most part, has agreed that that illegal attack was perfectly okay, some of which taken it to the level of saying that attack was necessary. You have other members of the Democratic Party who's fomenting aggression against Iran, making this point of saying, we're going to give Donald Trump this blank check at support or blank check support to attack Iran. You have other members of the Democratic Party who thinks this is perfectly okay, even though, even though any halfway thinking person full well understands that what's taking place is a provocation against Russia. They full well understand it. And it's not just Russia, it's Russia, Iran, most likely China, and yes, Syria. We need another party. We need another party. These two parties are going to get this country obliterated in a nuclear fallout. And the entire time, they're cheering away. The media is cheering away. The last Republican president lied us into a war based on this idea of weapons of mass destruction. In lying us into a war, he murdered a million people. He spent six trillion dollars to do it and 3,000 American lives. And he set a particular region on fire. The news media was completely uncritical of the lies that he was putting out. They didn't attack it. They cheerleaded it. They're doing the same thing on this. They're doing the same thing. In the same way you had Democratic support back then, you have Democratic support now. In the same way the press was a cheerleader for that conflict, the press is acting as a cheerleader for this act of aggression. There are parallels between these things. I am fundamentally missing why the media, why these other Democrats are not seeing these parallels. If it's true that Donald Trump is not the brightest bulb in a bunch, that's what the Democrats keep telling me. If it's true that the guy's somewhat of a sociopath and he's a bigot and a racist and all the stuff that the Democratic Party insists and continues to tell me, why all of a sudden are they okay that this apocalypse that this guy is supposed to represent, this guy that is perfectly okay with eating babies and everything else, why are they all of a sudden okay with this guy striking another country in an illegal act that could very well lead this country into a nuclear conflict? We need another party. I don't say we need it because it's practical. I say we need it because it's necessary. If we want to persist this country, if we want to have something to pass to our kids, it's not completely ecologically ravaged. It's not riddled with these social illnesses that we have dealing with poverty and income inequality. If we want to have a country and a planet at all that's not some nuclear wasteland, we need another party. How practical is it to engage in behavior and persist behavior that will very well end our existence? There are multiple paths, multiple lines. This is not complicated chess. You look at a particular line of action. You look at the things that people are saying. You look at historical context. 
of the events that took place that led us into war. Do you realize in World War I how that started? There was an assassination. That assassination eventually led to this weird and ridiculous series of events where all of these nations fall in line into a war, which I think it killed like 10 million people, some ridiculous number. Don't quote me on the number, but the number was up there. That war precipitated events that led to the second war, killing upwards of 50 million people. The things that you guys are seeing, this stuff is not innocuous. These things have consequences. These things have real world consequences. It bothers me greatly to see the media, to see lemmings, just people, parrot the stuff that Trump is putting out. To see Democrats, that's supposed to be the quote unquote resistance, that's supposed to be the opposition, towing this line. It bugs me greatly to see a man who I supported full on who I sent money to, who I stomped for, who I battled for, a socialist, being okay with this, being okay with this, ultimately he's being okay, his tepid reply implicitly makes him okay with this. If you're going to stand for something, you're going to say this is illegal behavior, which it is illegal behavior. If you're going to pretend that the United States hasn't engaged in believable behavior ourselves in regards to these wars, these drone wars, this terrorism on other countries, flouting the international law that Trump and all these other guys are supposed to love so much and revel in. This stuff is not innocuous. It's not innocuous. And I'm making this point that we need another party, not because it's practical. We need one because it is absolutely necessary. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, feel free to write. I mean, well, feel free to comment, of course, but also feel free to share. And you can always support the work through Patreon. Tell your family you love them. These are absolutely dangerous times. This is not a safe situation at all. This is immensely dangerous. So be aware of what your government is doing.